welcome to the training video for 3D Vermont. I'm going to be teaching you SketchUp Pro 2018. When I first launched it, I had to update or manage the extensions. To do that, you should sign in and I find it easiest to sign in with Google. Simply using my school email address and in mere moments you are signed in and then the update that is pending is the Trimble Connect update. And just like that it updated and said it was successful. Let's close that extension manager now that it's updated and let's make sure we have the right template. If you click window and then choose preferences you can click the template Simple feet and inches with this horizon line is great for this project. We do not need the person in the middle. She is simply there to show us a reference of height, but we're going to remove her. And now let's add a couple of special extensions. Click the window menu and choose the extension warehouse. When the warehouse first opens, you need to agree to use the cookies. And then we need to add some special extensions. The first one I want you to add is called TTLib, and we want TTLib2. After a moment, it loads, and then we can click on this one by TomTom. Tom. And when that appears, we can choose Install. It tells us that it has the ability to access the file system, and we need that, so we're going to say Yes. And soon you'll get a Successful Installed note. Now type Solid Inspector and hit search as well. Once we've chosen Solid Inspector 2, we simply hit install, answer yes to whether we want to install it, and we'll get the little message saying that it's done. All right, let's close that little Solid Inspector window. You'll see that you can grab and set that up on the toolbar where you want. Having access to the tools we need is very important. So let's click View Toolbars and let's add some important ones. First, we need the large tool set, which is going to give us the access. Next, we need the location toolbar. And then the last one that is handy is the views toolbar. When you bring those in, remember you can grab the handles and make sure they're on one layer. And then you're ready to start designing. This person in the center of our project is of no use to us, so we can click Delete. Let's use the amazing location tool to bring in the location of the building you care about. I'm using one in Wilder, Vermont. I'm going to click select region and I'm just going to accept it. After a moment, it brings it into SketchUp Pro and then I'm going to use that sweet top view to look at it from the top. Notice that my axis do not line up with the building. We're going to fix that with the sweet axis tool. I'm going to zoom in on the left corner of my building and find the edge of it. And the first thing I'm going to do is set up the red axis. Notice I just click once, release, and then stretch it out so it follows the red axis. When I'm done with that, I do the same thing on the green axis, zooming in so I can be as perfect as I can. With those parts in place, I can switch to the rectangle. Once again, it's click and release, click and release, and then zoom in and click on the exact corner of your building. Once you've got the main piece of your building done, use the rectangle tool. And the more we use the rectangle tool, the better to add the other parts of our project. With these extensions added, you can switch to the eraser tool and you can delete the little lines in between. That little line is removed, zoom in, that little line is removed, and I have now got the main shape of my building. I'm gonna push in the scroll wheel and look at it from the side. You'll notice it flickers. That is because there are two layers that coincide with each other. I'm gonna use the push-pull tool to lift my building up to what seems like an acceptable height, and now I'm gonna use a texture to get it so it matches what the real building looks like. We are going to get that cool texture using Google Earth. I'm going to click search, put in my Wilder Vermont, and then I need to zoom in and find my building. So there's my public library and I am going to drop the street view right in front of that public library. 
we need to look at the other side, so I'm just going to grab the mouse and spin around. And you can see there is the building we're looking for. We want to view as straight and clear as we can. So I am going to use these little arrows and I've got it as close as I can. Maybe you'll be able to get yours closer. And then we need a screenshot of the building. I'm going to use Nimbus, which is one of my favorite tools. And I'm simply going to grab from the top corner to the bottom corner of my building, making sure I've got it as close as I can to perfect. Save it somewhere you can find it and then return to SketchUp so we can bring that texture into our project. All right, friends, this is where we make the magic happen. Let's do File, Import, and find that texture we took. If yours was not a PNG, switch to what yours was and then import it and put it on the left corner and stretch it out so that it reaches the right edge. Let's match the height of our building by clicking the top face, switching to push pull, and pulling it down so that the roof matches the white line of the roof. Now we need to line up our texture. We're going to do that by right clicking on the face and adjusting that texture's position. The pins can be clicked and moved. And notice this is the edge of my building. This is the top of my roof. So right here would be the correct position of that pin. Once I set it down, I can grab and stretch it to the right spot. I'm going to click this pin and let go. Zoom in on the corner of the bottom of the building. Click and set it down. Then grab and hold and move that pin to the right side. This pin is so close it's almost not worth messing with. But I'm still going to. And then let's look down at the bottom one. Man, I'm going to just say that that is awesome, and I'm going to approve it. To approve it, you just right-click somewhere else and click Done. And now you have got the face of your building attached. Keeping our project straight is really, really important. So we are going to move over to the palettes and styles and edit so the colors always show up by axis. Notice we've got our lovely green line going across right now. All right, friends, with our building aligned like this, let's draw some awesome windows. Scroll in on the first window you want to make and simply click and release that rectangle tool and click where you want the window to end. When you've got that window in place, double click it and then hold down shift to get rid of the middle. So I clicked and held. I'm going to switch to the nifty move tool and I'm going to click move, but I'm going to tap control or that would be alt on a Mac. And then when you click, it makes a second copy. I'm going to hit M for move again. I'm going to do the control and click and I have just instantly made three awesome windows. I want to push these windows in and I'm going to click on the first one and I'm going to push it a long ways, but then I'm going to hit the number six and the inch mark on the keyboard. So it push is in six inches. I'm going to click the second window and I'm going to put the red tip on the face of that. So it automatically matches because I've just done this step. If I double click on the third window, it matches it. I'm going to move. So I'm looking at it from the front. So I used the rotation or the orbit tool. I'm going to grab all three of those and I am going to make a copy of them using the move tool again. So I hit the letter M. I click the corner I care about and I'm going to move it to this location over here. If we take that orbit tool, which I'm using by pushing in my scroll wheel, check it out. It pushed those in automatically as well. We're going to use that same technique to move and copy again using control or alt if you're a Mac user. This is one of the important things though. Make sure you're lining up with the blue lines, uh, not with the way the windows look in your world. So it's more important to be right above them. So notice I'm going to move to this one over here. I'm going to once again grab just the three I care about. Hit my M for move, and then when I move, I'm going to do that Control or Alt if you're on a Mac, and I'm going to line those up 
just like that. Always double check to make sure it worked the way you expected it to. And then let's move over and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to try and get fancy and do six at a time. Well, what the heck, we'll try and do nine at a time. The only problem is sometimes you select things on the back and it goes wackadoodle, but let's try it. M for move. I'm going to click on this corner right here. I'm going to do the control. I'm going to orbit in, and let's see if we can drop those in just like that. Holy cow, they all pushed in exactly right. So, there we go. One step, all the windows. You'll notice I pushed those in six inches because that shows up pretty well on a 3D printer, an FDM printer. Even at a small scale, if you've got a better printer or a printing larger, you, you can change those to fit the capabilities of your 3D printer. I'm going to do some brickwork quickly. Let's click on this piece right here. And let's click and bring that across. I want to make sure that my rectangle is the same size on both sides, so I'm going to use the guideline tool, which is part of the tape measure, and it'll allow me to make a mark all the way across to this side so that I'm sure that I end up at the same spot. I'm going to do the same thing from the bottom, and that way it just guarantees that this rectangle I'm creating for this piece of brickwork shows up the way I want. And there we have it. I'm going to push pull that out. Uh, I use the letter P. I'm going to do the four inches so it's a little bit less than the other part, but it still looks pretty nifty. And then I'm going to use that same trick where I move this out and click this face or this edge so that they line up and are exactly the same. Let's call this the end of lesson one. I'm going to click on the select tool, let you back up and take a look at your building. Uh, you should have some windows and some shapes, and you should be feeling pretty confident about your skills as you work on creating your awesome replica of a building that is significant in your town. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please hit that like button. If you haven't hit subscribe, please hit subscribe. If you got a question or a comment or a tip you'd like to share with me, please add it down below. And if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new movie from me, HL Mod Tech, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, friends.